This is Uncharted 3, Drake's Deception. Within Uncharted, the Nathan Drake Collection. We're here on the PlayStation 5 Pro. Be sure to like the video. Subscribing is great as well. So this is the final part of the Nathan Drake Trilogy. The end to the series? Or was it just going to be a placeholder for one more release? Yes, it was. Uh, so this is one of the games that again benefits from the PlayStation 5 Pro uh, kind of boost. So essentially what it's doing is it's going to be enhancing the edges, the uh, kind of, I guess you would say, text, the UI features, making them look a little bit sharper and a little bit better. Of course, the game still has a lower resolution and still looks like that. It just looks a little cleaner here on the PlayStation 5 Pro which is, you know, kind of what you would be hoping for. And I have videos showing off uh, all of the Uncharted games, or I'm slowly working through all of them. And you'll be able to dive in and take a look at uh, all the entries in this series. So I actually quite like this one. I think most people sort of really like two, but this was kind of a fun conclusion. And, you know, you had all the different characters, and obviously things kept going, but you get what I'm talking about. <gasps> the door is closed. Anyways, what are we getting here? 1080p, 60 FPS, and like I said, you know, 1080p, still 1080p, but it just looks a little sharper and a little bit better, which I think is something that fans will uh, appreciate for this sort of thing. I'm still imagining that at some point we'll probably get another updated collection of sorts, and, you know, it actually, it's a pretty good looking game all three of these titles are I guess the next kind of that's kind of a far jump the next kind of logical step for these would be to like you know do some sort of texture revamp or something like that the original for sure could use a bit of a a remaking uh, as to say so this is actually pretty late in the game but I picked this segment usually because it's uh, little, got a little bit of action, a little bit of storytelling things, and it doesn't really uh, spoil or really interrupt stuff too much, which is why it's always a, uh, a good option. That's all the water you want to drink, and then you want to climb all the way back out and stuff? Okay. Very well. So yeah, this kind of, I think, acted as a pretty good ending point. Uh, good set pieces, crazy action... You know, it, it wrapped things up well enough, and it, it went on this uh, globe-spanning journey to some new locations, some new focus on treasure, and very much in line with the, the other Uncharted games in terms of being something that is focused on character development, story, uh, again, kind of some characters not necessarily like really focused on in this one from the previous one but then you know other characters getting a little bit more attention and great <laughs> always throwing yourself into uh bad situations so you're kind of really focused on the punching midair i guess uh, kind of the the focus is on Nathan Drake, once again, because obviously he's the title character, but him and his mentor, uh, Sully, that as they search the Lost City... Oh, jeez. The Lost City of Aram of the Pillars, while battling an ancient society. Oh, led by Sullivan's former employee, player. Yeah. And you are <laughs> attempting to deal with that situation, and yeah, lots of crazy combat action sequences. I think they did a bit better of a job on this one in regards to not making it as much of a shooting gallery. Like, the first game, definitely the worst for that sort of thing, and then the second game, uh, improvements, and then I think this one, they kind of got at least a little bit more distinct which is exciting for those that were like, oh, it's too much shooting gallery type stuff, which apparently I am in uh, minimal company, I think, for feeling that way. I don't know, we'll, we'll see how folks kind of react to that kind of 
note and stuff. But anyways, this one I thought had some really really cool set pieces, and it made sense. You get the two. Of course, you're gonna do a third one, and it was kind of neat that this whole trilogy sort of released in the time span and did, and then you know we got one more after it, and I'm, I'm sure at some point we'll get additional entries in one way or another. And I'm sure eventually this, like I said, will be another a trilogy pack that gets further attention down the road as we do some other collections someday. I, I doubt this is the uh, definitive kind of thing, but it is also kind of like minimal return on investment if you are aiming to revamp these games because they still do look pretty good, particularly this one since it is the most recent of them outside of you know, going to that fourth entry, but the most recent of this, this collection of games. And uh, collectibles, uh, lots of extra content stuff, you know, it, it was kind of a definitive package release for the series. That is a lot of enemies. Hey, look at me, I'm uh, up on a leaderboard now. Good, good hunting, eh? Hmm. I also really love the setting here, like the sandy areas, like, it, it is funny that basically this part takes takes place <laughs> right right after uh, like a crazy aerial kind of like set piece which is fun good thing you got that guy wouldn't want to get blasted by a shotgun am I right holy and it also I, th I think the bodies and stuff a little less exaggerated for kind of deaths and, and that, which is fun, and you get the usual hijinks of the character, and yeah, the usual kind of stuff. Damn it, I'm trapped down here. Taking cover, battling various foes, moving through the environment frantically. That was always kind of their thing, was a little bit of an exaggerated kind of movement through the environment to tackle what's going on in the combat. Is this not gonna break? We... There we go. And then you do various levels of parkour while platforming and traversal through the environment and... The series in general very good at uh, making it obvious where you're supposed to go while also still uh, giving you... <laughs> really focused on new uh, kind of combative moves in this one. But like also just allowing you to look through an environment that looks like a real place and then still being like logically, oh, I can go over here or oh, I'm supposed to go there. And that's always kind of appreciated, especially in the modern era. But yeah, they, they definitely worked on a lot more like kind of animations for the combat too. Very stylistic here. I think I want to get out of here because that guy's going to blow up and okay, he blew up and that guy died and there's the guy behind me and there's the that guy's that way and <laughs> Ugh. A little crazy, the screen's all black and white because there's crazy stuff going on. I'm just fighting for my life here. They keep wanting to throw grenades to move me out of the way. Well that was actually pretty effective. Pretty dangerous, eh? Uh, an intense puzzle solving. Yeah, I, I mean, pretty straightforward what this one was. I don't know. I, I quite quite like this one. I think from a long term perspective, I believe two kind of really holds up as that kind of mighty storytelling setup and whatnot. And wow. Oh yeah, and there was like grenade throwback. Yeah, Call of Duty had that for years, and then, you know, all the potato thing going back to like Comp 3 and earlier, whatever. Just yeah, saying. These guys are really causing some uh, problems with me. Oh, the riot shields, they were so hot in this era. Riot shields were so big. This is where you get into some of those, again, shooting gallery kind of notes where you're kind of fighting them as they come at you. Like, how are you supposed to get around the riot shield there?
It's just like, it's such a pressure to fight these guys. Oh, you, you died a lot easier than you do in the second one, which is funny. Uh oh. Good array of weapons too, and then hand-to-hand -hand combat. I think that was even more focused on in this one as well, was like the brutality of doing a hand-to-hand -hand fights with people. Because there's a couple like brawl kind of scenes, like bar brawl scenes where you're fighting. And then I think they were kind of focused on that even more in uh, the one that followed, right? It's kind of neat to be sitting here and just kind of like mowing through the series, as to say. Nice excuse to revisit this. You know, the more I, like you think about it, the more you play this one and then you go on to the fourth one, it really is quite a uh, generational leap, isn't it? Hmm. Oh, you also get in a little bit of a look into like the history of the character too. Yeah, a lot more of that. Hmm. Maybe also like tonally, it does feel like a bit of an odd. Kind of wrap up compared to the other one that felt like it was still building the adventure. I feel like they didn't almost need to like wrap things up the series as much as they did. They could have gone on like almost endless adventures. But then again, I mean, from a studio perspective, you probably don't want to be stuck making these till the end of time, right? Rather work on different stuff, but you, you could have them go to like all these different places, do all these adventures. Basically just like a more gun-driven kind of Indiana Jones and Tomb Raider, right? I think I mostly like the uh, sandy environments and setup, eh? I always enjoy those sceneries and moments in games. I should have used the grenades to break out the uh, the foundations. I'm shot from the side here. Yeah, definitely a lot less cartoonish too for how you like kill enemies. Like it's dramatic, but it's a lot more weighted. You get more of an appreciation of that if you. Uh, be like me here and you sit and go through one then two to three and you're kind of like oh yeah no it's just the reactions and you can see the tech improving across them very interesting where's this rocket coming from i i guess that answers my question the atlantis of the sands eh what an adventure But was the quest all worth it? You guys kinda just eat these shots, eh? I think that was an annoying thing too, is like some of these fights kind of get dragged out because you're doing these really dramatic kind of like solo one-on-ones with people. I love how overly exaggerated that move is because it's really cool that you can pull that off. But when you see it a bunch of times in a row, it's a lot less cool, eh? How many bullets do you take, Juggernaut, dude? Again, this is why I kind of picked this segment of the game, because it's just so action-packed and combat-driven and something easy-going while you can chat and go over everything, everything in this experience. Oh, look at that! A collectible? Wow. Open the gate, let the sand come through. 
Actually, it looks pretty exhausted. Time to take out that gate. With the RPG. That would have been a much easier way to deal with that guy. <laughs> much, much easier. Oh God, it's hot. So they had such like exaggerated movement to him to make him feel more realistic in his and how he moves through the environment, which is fascinating. Because nowadays you think of that as almost less realistic. <laughs> I think we're a little outnumbered here. Hello there. What? English, I speak English. No, 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 no. Don't shoot me. Please don't shoot me. I think we take them all out. Off we go! See, very cool. Yeah, he's clearly dead man, take over the horse. Horse kind of has a mind of its own. Very action driven uh, set pieces, though. And we ride off into the sunset. You are far from home, America. Shokran. You do not belong out here. Any of you. You spared me. Why not just kill me along with the others? That would have been impolite. You are in distress. Even an enemy must be fed and sheltered. Are you my enemy, American? Drake. My name, it's uh, Drake. Salim, I am Sheikh of this tribe. Well, I uh, don't mean to be forward, Salim, but I need a horse. I don't have anything to offer in return. You plan to attack the English caravan alone? You know about them. My scouts have been tracking them for two days. Why are you here? Why do the English cross the Rub al-Khali? They're looking for the lost city of Ubar. Iram of the Pillars. They've taken my friend hostage. He's the only one who knows the way. Once they find Aram, he'll be worthless to them. They'll kill him. If they find Aram, we are all dead. Three thousand years ago. King Solomon commanded the power of the jinn, demons born of smokeless fire. 